The undo functionality is a must-have in any modern desktop application. If users can manipulate the document's contents and introduce destructive changes, then they expect to be able to undo these changes and restore their work to its original state. WX Widgets offers an easy way to implement a practically unlimited undo stack using the WX command processor class. In this tutorial, I'll show you how that class can work as a standalone undo manager in a simple list-based application. It can also be a part of a larger document view framework. In the next part of this series, we will see how this can be leveraged in a more complex application with multiple document objects and complex features. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it, and let's begin. Here's what we will implement a simple app that allows us to add and remove items from the list and undo or redo these operations. Full code is as always available on GitHub. Check out the link in the description. Here's the main window class. We have a method to set up the menu bar, the callbacks for button click events, the command processor object responsible for managing the undo stack, and our list view. The constructor is very basic. We lay out the UI elements using sizers and set up the button click event handlers. Be sure to watch my WX Widgets layout video for more details. When the user clicks the Add button, we display a text entry dialog, letting them enter the name. We then submit the Add command to the command processor. The Add List Item command is a custom class we will examine shortly. Remove button click handler is similar. We submit the Remove command this time. Know that we create the commands using the new operator, but we never delete them. The command processor will do that for us. Now our custom commands. The add command derives from the wx command class and implements the crucial do and undo methods. These contain the code that performs the add action by inserting an item to the list and rollbacks that action by removing the item. That's all we need to do. The command processor will call these methods when needed. For example, the do method will be called when the user first performs the action or decides to redo it. The remove command is similar. Again, the crucial thing is to implement the do and undo methods correctly. The last thing to do is to set up the main menu. We start by adding the built-in undo and redo menu items. This ensures the correct keyboard shortcut for every operating system. Thanks to the set edit menu call, the command processor will update the undo and redo menu labels every time a command is executed or rolled back. The initialize call does the first setup of these labels. Still, we need to bind the menu events. When the user clicks undo or redo, we need to call the respective methods from the command processor. And here's how this works. The user can perform add or remove actions and then undo them. With just a few lines of code, we implemented a fully functional undo stack. And that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.